company Endeavour Capital uh, invests in a range of technology and science businesses, not just in engineering and electronics, but also in biotechnology. So what is it that you're looking for when you make an investment decision? You mentioned people, and that's where it starts and almost ends. We, I've learned over now several years, uh, in fact nearly 10 years in this venture capital business, that I always look in behind the people. Can we trust these people? Do they seem to know what they're doing? But in the end, when things get difficult, can we trust them? Uh, and then if uh, uh, we form a view that yes we can, then we'll look at the science and technology more closely. But initially it's the character, the makeup of the people that really, really counts. You mentioned that when you started up there wasn't such a thing as venture capital in New Zealand. So this is really a, a new enterprise again. I know that there are, uh, as an emerging venture capital industry in New Zealand, uh, what is it that is uh, changing the, the, the climate in New Zealand that's developing this venture capital business? There are government policies which, uh, which are helping. There is uh, certainly a drive on the part of the universities, the Crown Research Institutes, to uh, commercialise their intellectual property, uh, the results of their science. Uh, there are, of course, people uh, with uh, larger amounts of capital that are interested in further companies on the stock exchange. So it's these uh, various pressures that have uh, formed the venture capital industry in the country. And of course uh, some of the government policies have said let's take a look at what happened uh, in the early days of venture capital in California and what's now happening in the UK and Scandinavia and the like. You mentioned the international comparison. The average New Zealander wouldn't necessarily think about investing in a high-tech business. I think probably the most popular type of investment in New Zealand would be property. Do you think that we are kind of different in the way we approach investment in this country, that the investment culture differs from uh, what you find in the United States, for example, or other countries that have got very dynamic economies? Markedly, markedly different. Uh, I call it investor sentiment. And one of the big issues that I think we have is that here people are looking at the stock market or com companies listed on the stock market for dividends they don't pay particular attention to capital gain, to capital growth or value growth on the stock exchange. Whereas in most other countries, investors are looking as much for capital gain as they are for dividends. So I think we don't quite have the right view here yet. And it doesn't seem to be changing too fast, which I think is an issue, a long-term issue, and a structural issue for uh, venture capital and the growth of uh, science and technology companies in the country. There is a, a debate going on in New Zealand about our prosperity in terms of the comparison with other countries and the most obvious one of course is Australia and there's quite a worry in New Zealand that many of our young New Zealanders are moving over there. But the nature of that debate seems to centre around things that often look peripheral, taxation or whatever and seldom around the way in which we actually generate prosperity in New Zealand. Is there something different about the way New Zealanders see themselves in terms of the way they look at how wealth is generated? In a word, I think it might be culture. But at the same time, and I do travel to Australia quite a lot, when I look at their newspapers, and quite often they will talk about companies that are doing well, individuals who are doing well, and these are not just the, the hugely wealthy people, but uh, uh, people who are doing reasonably well in their own medium-sized companies. And they're venerated uh, as much as their athletes, for example. Now, of course, they still do have the sensational stories, but here we seem to focus much more on what I would call just plain trivia and sensational kind of reporting. I don't think uh, the a reading public is getting well informed uh, on the success stories that we do have. So that's one of the issues. The other issue is that I think that uh, New Zealanders do like to feel safe and secure, so the idea of capital gain without a steady stream of dividends, for example, from a stock market seems, a, on the face of it, a wee bit scary. Uh, they would much rather invest in a, in a house uh, which is, um, and we know the housing market has been going very well over the last few years, and that I think New Zealanders like to feel secure and not step out into something which on the face of it might be risky, but
but it is not as risky. What's holding us back? Why is there some sense of paralysis in terms of a vision for the country to develop new wealth, new prosperity around what you might call the knowledge economy? Sometimes I think I just don't know because when you look at the, all of those individual groups that you mentioned and individuals within those groups, they all want the country to succeed. It seems that when they do though get together and aggregate themselves around, for example, the making of policy, that's when things then start to decay or deteriorate. I do sometimes wonder if we haven't got paralysis at the area of policy making that we seem to spend a long, long time developing policy which will take account of every contingency in the future. Mm. Whereas an alternative can be to get a policy which might not be all embracing, but to run a pilot program, take a look at the results, feed the, uh, the results back to the, the front in an engineering scientific way yes. and, and develop yet further policy yeah. rather than spending years trying to get it right in the first place mm. and of course it never is right. Mm. But the governments of, of all colours uh, have got their hearts in developing science, technology, business in the country. Certainly entrepreneurs have, certainly the Crown Research Institutes, universities, the polytechs, the uh, independent research um, organisations. But somewhere in the middle here, there seems to be a morass of policy making, which I think is slowing us down. It, maybe it's uh, molasses, not morass. <laughs> Neville, you've talked about the molasses, I mean, the sense of uh, inhibition we have in policy making and often in uh, political leadership in this country. And yet, we're talking about some very exciting things that are also going on. The venture capital industry is one of those. Is there a sense in which we New Zealanders just have to get on and do it ourselves? At some point, the, you have to say, yes, the longest journey does start with a single step. Yes. So let's do it. So we need to, uh, to simply take action. And uh, sometimes the policy can catch up. But, you know, I think there's an interesting uh, feature here that the world now is moving so fast uh, that it's almost impossible for the policy writers to catch up writing policy because uh, science, technology, the development of companies, uh, the whole way of doing things is outstripping our ability to write policy. And I don't think people have quite cottoned on to that yet. So that we shouldn't be waiting for the policy makers to lay out a route for us. Really the answer is in our hands as New Zealanders. So we just have to get on and do this ourselves. Absolutely right. Yeah, the answer is with ourselves as individuals and small groups of, of like-minded people actually doing things. So Neville, are you an optimist? Do you think that New Zealanders are capable of this? We look at other countries that seem to have uh, produced remarkable economic turnarounds or have had great success through the enterprise of their people. Do you think we can do this in this country? Absolutely, we can. Uh, there's just no doubt in my mind that we can. It's uh, the, the harnessing, the marshalling of those resources, getting them all pointed in the right direction. A wee bit like uh, huskies pulling a sled. If they pull across the trace, nothing happens. But if they pull all in one direction, then they can move many, many times their body weight on that sled, and that's what we need to look for. So clearly the venture capital business is that, it's a business. I mean there's a bottom line you have to deal with. But it seems to me that the sort of people who are in this are, have got another purpose as well. There's an element of philanthropy around this. How important is that kind of big picture philanthropic approach to this business that you're in? For me it's very important because I've been, uh, I grew up in this country, I was educated here, I feel very lucky to be in New Zealand and so I do have this philanthropic attitude to be, put something back into New Zealand and the venture capital business does have to generate a return but when there's uh, quite a large amount of your own money there then perhaps uh, it's, it's as much being philanthropic and feeling fulfilled and satisfied with what you're doing as much as anything. I'm a great believer in, in spirit and uh, you, you're right that there is a, a spirit starting to evolve amongst those people who have done well uh, by their own sweat of brow in the past and they do feel that they want to put something back into the country and, and that's a spirit that's growing and once that spirit starts moving then I think we can accomplish great things.